Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. I hope that you're all keeping well. So today's video is all about how to travel the Algarve. In this video we're going to cover our top recommendations for your trip to the Algarve. We will go through the best places to visit, the top attractions to see and all the best activities. When it comes to the Algarve, we've been everywhere. We're going off to an area called Lagos. Okay, so yes, we are in Albor. So, welcome to Faro. Okay, so we've arrived at Ferragudo. To a place called Sagres. Okay, so we've arrived here in Albufeira. So today we are at Slide and Splash. And it's a place called Tavira. Walked around the area where we're staying, which is Portimao. And it's the Benadryl Caves. Which is a beautiful place called Philomore. Today we are in a place called Monchique. A sunset safari cruise around the Algarve. Okay, so if you're new to the channel, I'm Samantha. And this is Keelan. <laughs> And over the last six months, we've been living in the Algarve in Portugal. Now you don't actually need six months to travel the Algarve. It's actually quite small and it doesn't take that long to get from place to place. The best way to get around the Algarve is by car. Okay, so now we are getting into our car. This is it here. We rented a car from a company called Guirin Car Rental. We paid 12 euro a day. However, it did rise to 18 euro a day as we approached the summer. The cost of petrol or gas if you're from the United States was really, really cheap as well. So renting a car will make your Algarve trip a better one. The next thing we want to cover is where exactly to stay in the Algarve. We stayed in Portimao, which is pretty much the centre of the Algarve. We got a great deal on an apartment that only cost us 500 euros a month. We have uh, an oven, dishwasher, washing machine, fridge, microwave. This leads us onto our first balcony. Mm. And then the main part of the apartment, I think it's both of our favourite, isn't yeah, this it? Is where we hang out most. This is where we hang out. It's the main balcony where we get the sun all yeah. day. If you would like to contact the information for the apartment manager who looked after us, send us a message on Instagram and we'll give you his details. And guys, if you'd like a more in-depth video on each of our recommendations, you can find them all in our Portugal travel series on our channel, so make sure to go and check them out. Also, while you're there, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell for future updates. So, let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to start with Portimao. This is where we based ourselves. So Portimao is a hugely popular spot here in the Algarve and is definitely one of the more well-known places for tourists. Although Portimao has a beautiful little town, most people will head to the party atmosphere of Praia de Rocha. Praia de Rocha has a long strip of restaurants and bars, a vibrant nightlife and some of the most beautiful beaches in the whole of the Algarve. Praia de Rocha's beach runs for a little over one kilometre. It's got a lovely boardwalk with plenty of beach bars and restaurants to choose from. We were really happy that we based ourselves there. Only a few minutes drive from Porto Mau you will find the lovely town of Alvo. Alvor is extremely popular with tourists, however, it still remains a beautiful, authentic Portuguese town. Alvor is an old fishing village and prides itself on having some of the best seafood in the Algarve. The town itself has many options to eat and drink, but we would recommend walking down towards the waterfront. Okay, so we are now heading towards the, uh, the sort of promenade or the water uh, front, and along there there's a lot of bars and restaurants as well and cafes and they're probably in a better location because they're literally right on the water. Here you can sit right next to the water, enjoying a drink and relax completely. It's fab. A recommendation for food from us would be to hit up a restaurant called Casa de Mar. If you're familiar with Portuguese seafood, well then you'll really like that place. <laughs> okay, first impressions, what are we thinking? Oh my god, my fish has a head on it, <laughs> and a tail. Are you freaked out? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> 
How's it taste? Oh wow, wow. so so nice. Yeah. Alvor has also got a massive beach. That beach is huge, isn't it? It runs for about three kilometers. What's unique about Alvor Beach is that it's a little bit away from the town, which makes it the perfect beach to chill out. Further west after Alvor, you will come to a hugely popular destination. That is the town of Lagos. So do you want me to just type in Lagos? If you point it over here, this that's Portimao in the distance, so that's exactly where we came from. Um, right over here, and then that beach runs all along. You got Alvor in between, and then you have Lagos here. Like Portimao, Lagos is well known to tourists. It's got a beautiful marina, a really nice old town with plenty of Portuguese charm. You'll also find some really interesting churches along with the original walls from the old town. Lagos is also a popular place to book boat tours from. An absolute must on your trip to Lagos is to visit a place called Ponte de Piedad. This place is one of our favorites in the whole of the Algarve. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. This is what it's all about. This is the Algarve. And speaking of favorite places in the Algarve. Right and then left. Good. And then right. Good stuff. These are natural smander. Look at this surrounding. My God, this is paradise. Oh my God, this is unbelievable, honestly. Unbelievable, highly recommend to do this if you're here. This is cool. Keep away from the big rock. Okay, perfect. Okay, we're okay. ready. Taking a trip to the Benagil Cave was our favourite activity to do in the Algarve. Oh my god, this place is... I've never seen anything like it. The town of Benagil is located in an area called Lagoa. The town is quite small, but the main attraction is to rent a kayak and make a short trip around the cave. The cave itself is spectacular and incredible to see. The sheer size of the cave and the formation will just blow you away. over the other side of the cave now so that's where our kayak is parked over there here's a bit of the water this is what you're dealing with this coming in here it's absolutely magic nice little swimming area here here's a big huge boat i think that's about as far as the boats can come they can't come and uh, they don't dock up around and let people off so if you're on the boat you've got to stay on the boat uh similar situation over here so yeah you can see in the distance there people are out kayaking past and uh, yeah, it's just absolutely incredible. And when you're done being amazed, you can have a little swim at its private beach. Private beach is probably a little bit of a stretch. Benagil is a huge tourist attraction, so having the place to yourself is not really something to expect. On our visit, we briefly had the place to ourselves, but pretty quickly it became full of tourists all looking for the perfect picture. A minor downside to what we still think is our favourite activity. So while you're in Lagoa, we would recommend to take the boardwalk from Carviero right up to Algar Seco. This might be the nicest walk in the whole of the Algar. This 600 metre boardwalk, not miles. It's like a, a, a 600 mile walkway. What? 600 mile walkway. 600 meters. Sorry. 600 miles, that's the length of Ireland. We'll give you the best view of the iconic cliffs of the Algarve. You can also book a boat tour which will bring you right into the caves. They also bring you along the coast as well, so it's pretty cool. 
We did our tour with Alvar Boat Trips. It cost about 25 euros and it lasted about two hours. If you're looking for the information for Alvar Boat Trips, we leave them in the description. Okay, so next up is Alpafira. Alpafira is a major holiday destination with sandy beaches and a really busy nightlife. Alpafira seems to divide opinion with a lot of locals feeling that it's just been turned into a place for tourists. Not yet, we will you though. Come back We're gonna come so back. You're so Irish, are you? What's the crack? Uh, maybe later. Maybe later. Thanks. Irish? Yes. Yes, Irish We already ate. No problem. We might time. come back though. Thank you. Look at this. <laughs> However, a lot of other people find it a really, really nice place to visit. We really enjoyed walking around Albafira's old town. It has some lovely little boutique shops, some really nice restaurants, and probably one of the nicest beaches that we've seen. It's also known as the party capital of the Algarve. Along the strip of Albafira, you will find bar after bar, nightclub after nightclub. If this sounds like a thing, well then Albafira is definitely the place for you. If not, then stick to the old town. Beside Albafira you will find the town of Villamora. Regarded as one of the wealthiest places in the Algarve, Villamora is part of the Golden Triangle. Villamora is a popular golf destination hosting some of the best golf courses in all of Portugal. So they have five main courses here. So if you're looking for a golf holiday in the Algarve, Villamora is the place to come. The main attraction in Villamora is definitely its gorgeous marina. Around the marina you'll find no end to bars and restaurants. And lo and behold, we have come across a rarity in Portugal. This right here is an Irish bar. There is a good variation of expensive and affordable restaurants, so whatever your budget, you'll have plenty of options. You will also see some incredible yachts parked in the marina. You can also do jet skiing in Villamora, which we did. Are you excited? Jet ski time. I am. Woohoo! Jet skiing is always a lot of fun. We got 30 minutes for 60 euro, which was quite reasonable. <laughs> we rented a jet ski from Villamora Water Sports. Again, I will leave their website in the description. They also do a hell of a lot of boat tours, so if you're in Villamora, go check them out. Another fun activity and probably not the most obvious to do in the Algarve is a safari cruise. Holy Jesus. We did it with a company called Al Safari Tours. They offer three deals, a full day, a half day and a sunset tour. We chose the Sunset Tour, which was great to see a real different side of the Algarve. You get collected at Albafira and then off you go. We got to see so many places that we definitely wouldn't have got to see ourselves. We'd never get to see the, this part of the Algarve no, unless you actually did this tour. We got a real sense of the beautiful Portuguese countryside. This is unbelievable. One, two, three, go! 
Unfortunately, we didn't get much of a sunset due to the weather conditions, but it was a really cool experience, topped off with a lovely meal on the mountains. So, Cheers! So, Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Good luck! Not your average Algarve activity, but definitely one to consider doing. Oh my god, that's intense, isn't it? Oh my god, it's, oh. it's brilliant. Just make sure you've got a strong grip to hold on. I've never had so many near misses with being decapitated. In my oh life. my god, it's like a game. It is like I a game. God, a it's risky like you game. Have to, you have to duck all the branches on each side. <laughs> Link to Al Safari's website is in the description. So in the Algarve, there's a lot of water parks, and the one that we chose to go and see was Slide and Splash. Today we are at Slide and Splash. Woo! Tickets cost 26 euro. A little tip from us would be to book your tickets online. So yeah, we booked our tickets online last night. You get a small little online discount. We paid 26 euro each for the tickets. So yeah, we're excited. It was 15 euro for the locker and you get 10 euro back then at the end. So five euro five turned the locker charge, for the yeah. day. So yeah, we'd highly recommend to take a trip to Slide and Splash and it's great fun for all age groups. A tip for anyone that's looking to go to Slide and Splash with a GoPro, just make sure that you have an attachment for your head. They will not allow you to go down the slides with a handheld, so make sure you've got it attached to the body. What made our experience at Slide and Splash even better was the fact that there was nobody there. Due to COVID regulations, they had to minimize their capacity to 50%. Although in saying that when we were there, it didn't even look like it was a quarter full. It was perfect. So, no kios for us. We had a really, really good day at Slide and Splash, didn't we? Did deadly. you enjoy it, Keelan? Yeah, deadly. Deadly <laughs> it spot. Was deadly, wasn't Isn't it? it? Yeah, oh my God, for the price we paid, they had so much going on in there. So yeah, if you're in the Algarve, definitely check out Slide and Splash. So, next up, we have a town called Sagresh. Zagresh is to the far west of the Algarve and is literally the tip of Europe. From where we were staying in Portimao, it took about two hours to get there. You can also visit a place called Cape St. Vincent, which is the most southern western point of Portugal and of Europe. It's really something to see. The cliffs are spectacular. Zagresh is regarded as a surfer town and you can definitely see why. The town is full of surf shops offering some lessons and surfing equipment. You'll actually see B&Bs and hotels offering surf lessons as part of their accommodation deal. The town itself is quite small, but the relaxed nature of the place made it a big hit for us. This might be one of my favourite parts in the whole Algarve, this Sagresh. You can also go and visit the fort, but to be honest, it wasn't really that great. I think it costs like three euro each in, but if you don't visit, you won't miss that much. The highlight of Sagresh was definitely the scenery. The landscape is just incredible out there. The beaches are just breathtaking. And the food and the wine was just delicious. Everyone knows Faro as the airport, but believe us, it is definitely more than just the airport. Cute little sign, isn't it? Faro is known as the capital of the Algarve and is definitely worth a visit. It's different to a lot of the towns of the Algarve and definitely has a capital city vibe to it. It's got a lot of historical sites that are definitely worth a visit, including the Faro Cathedral and the Bone Chapel. Which was... Freaky! A chapel built completely out of human bones. These are what we were talking about. These right here are legitimate skulls of monks. Of monks. And the entire chapel is made of is, skulls of Is bones. built with it. Look at it. That oh is God. insane. 
Faro has also got a decent nightlife with a lot of funky bars, which attracts a lot of young people. <laughs> a tip from us would be to go and visit the rooftop bar in the Faro Hotel. Oh my god. Let me see. Mm. Glass, isn't it? It's so nice. It's lovely. I can't believe we just found I it. I can't believe we just found this. It's <laughs> so nice. <laughs> From Faro you can take a boat trip along the river from Mosa out to some of the islands. This is something that we would highly recommend. We took a trip to Isla Deserta, a deserted island off the coast of Faro. Although we only had a short visit, we would have loved to stay longer. They do offer different boat trips out to different islands as well. It cost us 15 euros return and it took about 45 minutes out to the island. So yeah, some islands would be definitely something we'd recommend on your trip to Faro. Uh, Praia de Faro, obviously the, the local beach, Deserta, that's where we were. Farol is another island. Uh, Hangaras and Du Colatra, they are also islands that you can go and visit. Similar to Faro, Tavira is located in the far east of the Algarve. In fact, it's only 30 kilometers away from the Spanish border. This town was recommended to us by a lot of Portuguese locals. The best way to get around Tavira is by using the local transport. Tavira is known as Algarve's most charming town. It's home to a Roman bridge which dates back to the 12th century. You can also get great views of Tavira by taking a trip to the medieval castle. What's the view like? Nice. It is. It's nice. You can actually kind of see how big Tavira actually is. It's also got a lovely garden in there and it's really, really nice to walk around it. One recommendation from us during your visit to Tavira would be to take a boat trip out to Tavira Island. A return ticket for the boat was only two euro each and it took about 20 minutes. The island itself is beautiful. We left it a little bit late in the day to go over. So we would recommend if you're taking a visit to go early in the day because there's so much going on over there. So yeah, we're just after taking a little bit of a walk around the island and wow, well, I wasn't expecting it to be like this. It's deadly. Look at those clouds. Yeah. It's been like that the last few days. So I don't know what's going on with the weather. The absolute cheek of Portugal to have this weather in the middle of June. Mm -hmm. Tavira was actually our longest drive in our Algarve road trip. From Porto Mayo it took about two and a half hours, but for us it was definitely worth the trip. So another beautiful and charming town to visit is Ferragudo. Ferragudo is located right beside Portimao. It's quite a small town which used to be a fishing village and here you'll find a lot of fishing boats and seafood restaurants. It's also home to some of the most beautiful houses in the Algarve. And one of the prettiest towns in the Algarve. In Ferragudo you can visit Castello de São João de Arade, a medieval castle situated right on the beach. This is a private castle that we believe has been owned by an artist. Unfortunately you cannot go inside, but you can walk around it. That actually connects you from one beach to another, so it's pretty cool. There is also a main square in Ferragudo, which is surrounded by restaurants, so you'll be spoiled for choice for food. Thank you very much, all the best. Good luck, bye bye. And if you want to go and see a glorious sunset, then we'd recommend to take a trip up to the lighthouse. So we've arrived here at the lighthouse. 
This is the hair behind me. And I actually think we've arrived just in time for sunset. From here, you can sit back on the cliffs and watch the sunset. It is just beautiful. Honourable mention goes to a place called Monchique. Uh, unfortunately for us, when we visited, it just rained like crazy, so we didn't get to see much of it, but... We've heard some amazing things from what we had seen on our day out there. It looked incredible. We went to the top of the mountain, which I believe is the highest point of the Algarve. So we are literally at the very top of the Algarve. <laughs> at the top of Monchique, I this think is this the is the highest point that you can come. It is, Monchique is the highest mountain in the Algarve and we are on top of it. Uh, like I said, the weather wasn't great, so we didn't get amazing views, but I believe that is actually one of the best places to go for sunset as well. So maybe on your trip to the Algarve, you'll have better luck than us. Okay, it's uh, starting to rain, so. <laughs> Back in the car. Back down the mountain we go. And uh, yeah, go check Manchico. So we really hope you enjoyed our travel guide on the Algarve and found it very helpful. And if you're planning a trip to the Algarve, we hope that you'll have as much fun as we did. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, you can drop them in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. You can also follow us on Instagram for daily updates. We're going to be doing a lot more of this style videos on places that we have visited. So some travel guides coming up on our channel over the coming weeks. So you can hit the notification bell for all of our updates. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.